Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. I am Black Ice Dragon and today we are going to be going through my Threadripper water cooling build. I had originally intended to do this as two videos, but instead I decided as I was going through editing that I'm actually going to do it as one video. So first of all, we're going to go through the unboxing of the parts and kind of what's been going through. Then there's going to be a hyperlapse sort of of the stream where I was doing most of the build. The only thing I missed out on was the tube bending part. I decided to do that off camera because it was a little bit difficult and there was quite a bit and I couldn't really set, get a good setup for that. So that's the only part that's missing. After that, there's some slow motion, some regular stuff of just filling up the lines and just a little bit of a montage. So thank you so much for watching this. And if you like it, make sure to like, subscribe. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna put out more content like this. And uh, if you feel free, give a comment. Today we are going to be doing the unboxing of my Threadripper water cooling gear. Um, as some of you may know, I've been planning this for a little while now, mostly because my Threadripper was actually throttling and overheating understock system settings using a Corsair H115i. The main reason for that being that the heat spreader on there does not cover the entirety of the cold plate on the CPU. I also wanted to see if I could overclock this thing, as most people seem to be hitting uh, 4, 4.1 gigahertz, depending on what's going on. I also was planning on possibly going into a 32 core thread ripper too. Uh, that would be something that would be coming in the future, but this sets me up specifically for that. So just to go through quickly, uh, we've got a EK Res 140 Revo with a D5 pump on there. Um, also got, as I said, the mono block for the Asus Zenith X399 board. I didn't check yet, but I know when these originally came out, there was an issue with, as I said before, the cold plate, and actually EK had originally shipped out a cold plate that was not big enough for Threadripper. I know they had released one for the monoblock that was bigger and actually covered the cores for Threadripper, so we will take a look at that as well. Um, we've also got this massive EK Coolstream CE420 triple 140 millimeter radiator. This thing should have no problems whatsoever managing the heat with our Threadripper. So without further ado, I will get us all set up so we can take a look at what we got. All right, so now we have the three parts set up here on the table and we are going to do a unboxing of our three pieces here. So for now, we'll just set aside the parts and we'll take them one by one. So to start with, we're going to pull open the EK WB Asus X399 Gaming RGB. Shout out to Titan Rig in the States there. Um, I wasn't able to get this from a Canadian retailer, so I had to order this from uh, the US and go across the border and go get it. Luckily, I live fairly close to that, so shout out to those guys. Thank you very much. Got the tape here. Oh, on both sides. I know it's not really proper to use a screwdriver for it, but it seems to do the job. Got the box, papers. This is actually quite hefty. Like, I'm actually gonna, I'm really looking forward to seeing what this looks like. Must be the strip for the VRMs. Instructions on install work. Reminder, have all your stuff. I've already got, as we got looking at the block, we're gonna look at the radiator. I have the reservoir and the pump built into one. Uh, I'll be going over accessories as well, fittings, things I have. So. A little bit of thermal grizzly along with the uh, hold downs there. And wow, this is a huge, huge block. And actually, I don't know, let me see if I can get this plastic off here. and not touch the underside of here, trying to keep that stuff clean. This is actually a very, very hefty piece of aluminum. Or I, I'm guessing uh, copper that's been anodized, but 
you can see if I can get that to focus in for you here. That is an absolutely massive cold plate, and that is an absolutely huge water block there. So right along the top here, this is going to be cooling our VRMs, and then this is going to be for our thread ripper here. So let's set that aside for now. Let's take a look at the X-Res. This is going to be the heart of everything. Now, I'm really hoping I didn't screw up the focus there. As I'm just starting to experiment with setting manual focus and using my DSLR for the video recording. As always, we take that off, we get the box inside. Pump combo. This is the RGB edition as well. And reminder, go over all your stuff. Here we have the pump and reservoir. <laughs> I've forgotten how big water cooling parts generally are, but that is big, big pump there. This one also comes with a nice uh, braided cable. Sorry, I kind of took that out of frame there. That is very, very gorgeous looking piece. Also got the uh, EK logo up in here. Also I'm guessing uh, form of rubber mount or something like that. To reduce vibration. And then basically our changes. So if we want to take the uh, EK logo out, put that in there. Set that guy aside as well. Let's take a look at this absolutely gorgeous massive radiator. I'll get a video comparison of the size of this radiator versus the Corsair one that I'm currently using. That is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous piece. That is a, a very thick radiator. I believe it's 62 millimeters wide. Um, I'm going to be doing three Noctua industrial 140 millimeter fans on that and then that's going to be probably just in a push configuration and if need be in the future I might go for a push pull or um, I also have plans to migrate everything from my Corsair uh, 900D over to a Case Labs SMA8 in the future so that will actually allow me to mount another one of these radiators possibly either top or bottom and then we'll uh, have some videos for that so Thank you very much. Look forward to uh, showing you guys some more videos of the install and showing off kind of what's what I'm learning, what's going through, and uh, we will see you in the future.
So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video, and like I said, I hope to add more. So keep an eye on the channel, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I am Black Ice Dragon, thank you.